In the name of God, hello everybody. This is session 10 of your discourse analysis lesson. In this session, I want to talk about the nature of reference in text and in discourse. Okay, we want to talk about uh, uh, about the reference <coughs> and uh, the relationship between elements in the text and in discourse. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the text. What is text? As you know, text, we said, is the verbal record of a communicative event. Okay? Many authors are concerned with the principles of connectivity, which bind the text together and force co-interpretation. So, in, a, in each text, I mean, there are um, a kind of connect connectivities which I mean bind the sentences in a text together and we have a kind of co-interpretation in any text so I mean we should look for connectivity in each text okay the I mean the devices the formal devices which show the kind of connectivity in each test text okay so uh, we want to I mean talk about the term cohesion cohesion Halliday and Hassan take the view that the primary determinant of whether a set of sentences do or do not constitute a text depends on cohesive relationships within and between the sentences which create texture. You see, we should look at a kind of, I mean, cohesive relationship between sentences in any text which, I mean, uh, uh, produce a kind of texture okay so in each text there I mean there is a kind of connectivity and we should look I mean look for cohesive relationships cohesive relationships within a text are set up where the interpretation of some elements in a discourse is dependent on that of another so if I mean uh, there are a kind of cohesive relationships between sentences in a sentence so uh, some elements in one sentence may refer back uh, to another I mean element in another sentence and the interpretation of some elements depends on the I mean uh, uh, some other elements in other sentences so this is a kind of I mean cohesive relationship for example look at the example wash and core six cooking apples put them into a fireproof dish you see here this I mean text consists of two sentences uh, in second sentence the pronoun them refers back to cooking apples in the first I mean uh, sentence so the interpretation of the element of, of one element in the second sentence depends on the I mean elements on the first sentence so we can I mean say that there are cohesive relationships or I mean there is a kind of connectivity between these two sentences because as you see here the I mean interpretation of a sentence I mean uh, um, them as uh, I mean as uh, now in the second sentence refers back to the six cooking apples in the first sentence so this is a kind of this sh I mean shows a kind of relationship and connectivity and cohesive relationship a familiar type of explicitly more cohesive relationship in text is indicated by formal markers okay we can see in sentences between i mean sentences a kind of formal marker which shows that there are i mean a kind of connectivities between two sentences which relate what is about to be said to what has been said before these formal markers are markers like and but so and then like these for example taxonomy Look at this, I mean, formal cohesive marker. The first one, the first kind of markers show a kind of additive. For example, we use and, or, furthermore, similarly, in addition. You see here, these, I mean, terms 
show a kind of additive I mean information so this is a kind of formal marker we show the connectivity between sentences the other one is adversative you see here but like but however on the other hand nevertheless you see here these are again show uh, they are I mean a kind of a uh, formal marker to show a kind of connectivity between sentences the third one causal you see here so consequently for this reason it follows from this you see here again these terms show uh, a kind of connectivity and the last one temporal like then after that an hour later finally at last you see here these shows a kind of again connectivity so these are i mean uh, maybe in between sentences we use a kind of formal marker like these to show the connectivity between sentences and to show i mean uh, cohesive relationship between sentences these markers i mean show this kind of connectivity Halliday and hassan as two i mean uh, linguists recognize that it is the underlying semantic relation that actually has the cohesive power they believe that there is a kind of underlying semantic relation it means based on meaning okay that uh, cause a kind of cohesive between uh, I mean sentences they believe that not only just these formal I mean markers show a kind of connectivity but uh, there I mean should be a kind of semantic relation between sentences it means that the re the sentences should I mean should be related to each other by meaning not just by using this formal marker but uh, uh, based on the meaning they should be i mean related to each other rather than okay the particular cohesive marker nonetheless they insist that it is the presence of cohesive markers which constitute textness so uh, we can use these formal markers but there should be a kind of i mean semantic relation between sentences to show a kind of cohesive and connectivity the cohesive relationship which particularly interests them is that which they discuss under the headings reference substitution ellipsis and lexical relationships okay we want to show a kind of i mean cohesive relation i mean connectivity between elements in sentences by these terms okay reference what is reference what is substitution ellipsis and lexical relationships okay one by one i want to talk about these kind of terms which show the i mean cohesive relationship okay and connectivity between sentences the first one reference and or co-reference co or co-referential forms co-referential forms or uh, reference i mean are forms which instead of being interpreted semantically in their own right make reference to something else for their interpretation okay so what is reference like the previous example you see as i told you the previous example this one wash and core six cooking apples put them in a fireproof dish as you know as you see here the interpretation of one element i mean pronoun here in the second sentence depends on the element some elements in the first uh, i mean uh, sentence we call this kind of relationship reference because one sent uh, one element refers back to the another element we call it i mean reference Okay, so so as you know, uh, again, uh, the inter instead of being interpreted semantically in their own right, uh, make reference to something else for the interpretation, where their interpretation lies outside. You see here, outside. I mean, the text in the context of situation, the relationship is said to be an exophoric relationship. Okay, so when the interpretation of one element i mean refers back to outside element 
we call it exophoric relationship which plays no part in textual cohesion because it refers back to something outside the text okay we call it exophoric where their interpretation lies within a text okay they are called endophoric relation and do form cohesive ties within the text so you see here we we have, we have i mean two kind of reference the first one the interpretation of some elements refer back to the outside of the text we call it exophoric and when the interpretation of some elements refers back to some other elements in the text we call it i mean endophoric endophoric relation this one i mean uh, refer back to something in the text uh, uh, itself i mean uh, are of two kind okay so endophoric relations are of two kind for example those which look back in the text for the interpretation we call it anaphoric relation for example i want to i mean say a kind of example for example i say look at that look at the sun it's going down quickly you see here this kind of pronoun i mean it refers back to the sun i mean to, uh, before that okay so we look back for the interpretation we call it a kind of anaphoric relation and those which look forward in the text for the interpretation we, we uh, which are called cataphoric relation for example look at this example it's going down quickly the sun you see here it in the first sentence i mean refers back to the sun i mean uh, at the end so we call it i mean cataphoric so reference i mean consists of two parts exophoric which refers back to the outside of the text endophoric which refers back within the text and this endophoric itself consists of two parts anaphoric which look back for the interpretation and cataphoric which look forward for its interpretation this is i mean these are the sub parts of the reference okay the same relationship can also be, I mean, positive to hold between other forms as exemplified in below. below. These kind of forms also show a kind of reference, I mean, and connectivity. For example, we use repeated form. Okay, this is this show, I mean, kind of connectivity. We use partially repeated form. Again, this show a kind of cohesive and relationship. We use lexical replacement. Okay, these are these are again show a kind of connectivity and cohesive relation. We use pronominal form. For example, it, them. You see, they again show a kind of connectivity. And we use substituted form. Okay, this is a kind of show kind of connectivity. So we can show a kind of connectivity and cohesive relation by use of many. I mean. Uh, many forms okay cohesion uh, may be derived from lexical relationships like hyponymy part whole collocability by further structural relationships uh, like uh, i mean clausal substitution comparison syntactic repetition consistency of tests stylistic choice and so on so we can use a kind of i mean formal markers and syntactic markers to show a kind of cohesion and relationship between elements and sentences in a text so there are many i mean ways to show the connectivity and cohesive in sentences so this is the i mean definition of reference as you know there are but two main questions need to be asked first the first question is such cohesion necessary to the identification of a text is i mean this cohesion is necessary and secondly is such cohesion sufficient to guarantee identification as a text so is i mean this cohesion is necessary and is it sufficient 
So these are two main questions, necessity, sufficient. You see here, Halidei and Hassan appear to suggest that it is. It means that it is necessary and it is sufficient. But they are ambi ambivalent about it because beside those explicit expression we need, we need underlying semantic relation which actually has a cohesive power. As you know, and as I told you, beside those, I mean, formal markers which show a kind of cohesion, we need underlying semantic relation. As you know, there should be a kind of, I mean, uh, relationship between sentences based on meaning okay not just formal marker we need this semantic relation to show a kind of cohesive uh, power and cohesion in uh, in the text so uh, they are maybe they are necessary i mean the cohesion uh, marker but uh, maybe it's not sufficient because we need uh, beside i mean those uh, markers we need underlying semantic relation so Halidei Hassan insists that such explicit realization is necessary when they I mean make statements like for example a text has a texture and this is what distinguishes it from something which is not a text and cohesive ties between sentences stand out more clearly because they are the only source of texture in such a statement, they seem to be talking of verbal elements which appear in the verbal record, not of underlying semantic relation. There are, so look at the example for uh, this, I mean, <coughs> uh, term, underlying semantic relation, I mean. There are many examples which there is no explicit marking of relationships between their sentences. For example, look at this sentence sentences uh, there is the doorbell <coughs> i'm in the bath you see here one speaker i mean says that there is the doorbell and the other says i'm in the bath you see here as you see there is no i mean formal marker to connect these two sentences but I mean, there is a kind of underlying semantic relation which, I mean, connected these uh, two sentences to each other. So, in this example, the normal reader, reader will naturally assume that these sequences of sentences constitute a text. And, I mean, there are <coughs> semantic relations between the sentences in the absence of any, I mean, explicit uh, marker. So, in contrast, formal cohesion markers will not guarantee a text, okay? Uh, they, I mean, these kind of markers are necessary for showing the uh, connectivity, but they are not, I mean, uh, sufficient, and they are the, um, uh, I mean, uh, these kinds of markers, I mean, uh, do not guarantee a text because in some texts, in spite of using formal markers, there is no coherent in events. So, as you see in the previous example, again, I want to show you this example you see here. I mean, there is no um, uh, formal marker. So, there is no, for example, there is no because, and, or, but. You see here, there is no formal marker. But the a normal reader uh, will naturally assume that there is a kind of connectivity between these two sentences because there is a kind of underlying semantic relation which relates these two sentences together and we can understand, I mean, the meaning of these two sentences and the relation between these two sentences. Okay, so... Uh, this is, uh, I mean, for uh, recognizing kind of text. Sometimes columns, closeness of, I mean, lineation, type of printing written text, 
and voice quality, intonation, pausing in a spoken language. Uh, again, these kind of I mean signs may help to determine a text. So beside those markers, uh, some other markers may help us to determine a text. The hearer reader will make every effort to impose a coherent interpretation. We can say texts are what hearers and readers treat as text. Okay, uh, in this session, so I talked about the text and the formal markers to show a kind of uh, connectivity and cohesion between sentences uh, and uh, I first I talk about the formal markers as you see here then uh, I talk about some terms based on the cohesive or connectivity one of them is reference in this session I talk about just reference what is reference? The reference, I mean, has uh, many subtypes. For example, exophoric, which relates back to the uh, outside of the text. Endophoric, which relates to, to within the text. Uh, the endophoric itself consists of two parts. Anaphoric, which look back in interpretation. And cataphoric, which look forward for, it, for its interpretation. And there are other markers to show a kind of connectivity between sentences and uh, there uh, I mean there are two kind of uh, questions and then at last I talk about the underlying semantic relation which is necessary to understand the connectivity between uh, two or uh, other I mean many sentences so uh, and at last I talk about some other signs which help us to uh, determine I mean a text that's enough for today thank you for your attention and goodbye everybody